Kia ora guys, welcome back to the 2.3 gas exchange series. This is video 8. In this video you'll be learning about the advantageous adaptations of the tracheal system and the limitations of the tracheal system. By the end of this lesson you should be able to explain how specific adaptations of the tracheal system enable crickets to survive in their terrestrial niche and discuss the limitations of the cricket tracheal system. So the cricket tracheal system needs to make sure it has these four characteristics of an efficient gas exchange system to be able to keep up with the high metabolic demands of a flying insect. As I pointed out in video 7, crickets and insects in general are more susceptible to desiccation or drying out because of their small body size. So it's even more crucial for crickets to have adaptations to retain moisture in its body. In this video, you'll be learning about how spiracles have the important role of controlling the delicate balance between retaining moisture and maintaining a concentration gradient, among these other three adaptations. Let's start with adaptations for maximizing surface area to volume ratio. A large surface area to volume ratio is a requirement for efficient gas exchange because the more sites for gases to enter and exit the tracheal, the faster the rate of diffusion. The tracheal system has two adaptations for maximizing the surface area to volume ratio. First is the system of highly branched tubes that permeates or directly goes into the tissues. This extensive branching of trachea, you can see here, and the tracheoles, the much smaller branches, increases the surface area to volume ratio available for gas exchange. The branching also makes sure that every tissue and every cell of the body gets to participate in gas exchange. Any structures that protect the airways from getting damaged also contribute to maximizing the surface area to volume ratio. Because if the delicate tracheals get damaged, there would be less surface area available for gas exchange. So the second adaptation for maximizing surface area to volume ratio are the small hairs or bristles that line the inside of the spiracles. These are some really good pictures of different insects and how they've adapted to have these small bristles or these small hairs that line their spiracles. These small hairs or these small bristles filter air as it enters to prevent dirt and debris from entering and clogging the airways or the tracheal system, which would reduce the surface area available for gas exchange. This is an important adaptation. These small hairs around the spiracles are an important adaptation for cricket survival because they inhabit dusty environments. Dirt and dust particles could seriously damage the delicate respiratory surfaces, the tracheals, if they get in. Now let's look at adaptations for moisture. Gases must first dissolve in water before they can diffuse across the specialized respiratory surface and therefore the tracheals must be kept moist. So it's a problem for crickets that air is dry because inhaling dry air could risk drying out the tracheals. In fact, Due to their large surface area to volume ratio from being just really small animals, crickets are more susceptible to drying out and they need to have adaptations to create and retain moisture. The cricket tracheal system has three adaptations to keep tracheals moist. The first adaptation is that the cricket's tracheal system is internal located inside the body to limit its exposure to environmental factors like sun and wind. The tracheal system is enclosed behind an exoskeleton, which is impermeable to water, meaning that water can't get go in and out of it, and therefore it stops any water escaping or evaporating out of the cricket's body. The second adaptation for moisture is to do with the cricket's spiracles, these um, openings here. The exoskeleton contains valved openings called spiracles, and these valved openings open and close to control water loss and ventilation. Remember from video 7 that when spiracle muscles relax, they cause the valves to open, and when spiracle muscles contract, they cause the spiracle valves or the spiracles to close. 
This opening and closing of spiracles is a tightly controlled process because if the spiracles are open for too long, too much moisture will evaporate out of the cricket. But if the spiracles are closed for too long, not enough new air will diffuse into the tracheals and this will reduce the concentration gradient at the respiratory surface. So opening and closing of the spiracles are under feedback control with spiracles opening when the carbon dioxide levels rise to increase ventilation and this lets oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse in. Spiracles shut when carbon dioxide levels drop and this prevents water loss and conserves moisture. This fine balance between increasing ventilation and conserving water is especially crucial during flight when aerobic demand is greatest. Preventing water loss makes sure that the gas exchange surface remains moist at all times. Finally, the third adaptation for moisture is hemolymph. Tracheal cells produce a watery fluid called hemolymph at the very tips of the tracheals, and this allows gases to dissolve into the fluid so that it can diffuse across the specialized respiratory surface. Here's a good picture showing where the tracheal fluid or the hemolymph is, and it's at the very tips of the tracheal where gas exchange happens. Now let's look at adaptations for a short diffusion distance. Since diffusion is a passive process, it actually takes a relatively long time for gases to diffuse from one area to another. Diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide is only efficient when the diffusion distance is short. The cricket tracheal system has one adaptation to keep this diffusion distance short. They have a very thin respiratory surface. The tips of the tracheals here and here where gas exchange happens are very fine tubes made up of only one tracheal cell. So in this picture, it's been labeled that there is just one tracheal cell making up the very tips of these tracheals. And here's another picture of this one tracheal cell that wraps itself around this um, air passage here. For oxygen to diffuse from air in this air passage in the tracheals, directly into the body cells, which would be out here in this picture, or here, this is a body cell, um, specifically it's a muscle cell, oxygen only has to pass through one tracheal cell. And the same thing applies for carbon dioxide to diffuse from a body cell, like a muscle cell, into the air inside the tracheals. It only has to pass through one tracheal cell, making the diffusion distance very, very short. Now let's look at adaptations for a steep concentration gradient. The concentration gradient of oxygen and carbon dioxide across the specialized respiratory surface is what drives diffusion and therefore gas exchange. The steeper the concentration gradient across the tracheal, the more efficient gas exchange is going to be. The cricket tracheal system has two adaptations for maintaining a steep concentration gradient across the tracheals. The first adaptation are called rhythmic body movements, which happen during flight. Rhythmic body movements happen naturally during flight when the flight muscles contract and relax, which changes the shape of the cricket's abdomen. You can just imagine that as rhythmic body movements compress and expand the abdomen, they also compress and expand the airways and the air sacs. And this increases the ventilation or airflow through these tracheals, um, trachea and air sacs, which then increases the concentration gradient across the tracheals, the respiratory surface. This is because air in the tracheals will be oxygen rich and the cells on the other side will have low oxygen levels due to the high rate of aerobic respiration during flying, thus creating a steep concentration gradient. The second adaptation are the chitin rings, which is depicted in this picture by these dotted lines. Trachea are lined with a spiral fold of chitin rings, which keep the trachea open, allowing for ventilation to maintain a steep concentration gradient. Chitin is in a spiral arrangement to allow flexibility and bendiness, which is needed during flight and rhythmic body movements.
Chitin rings are like the reinforcing wire that keeps airways open during rhythmic body movements while allowing some flexibility. They're also kind of like the cartilage rings we have around our own trachea. Without chitin, external forces like gravity and rhythmic body movements would compress these tracheal tubes and would prevent airflow or ventilation. Now let's discuss the limitations of the tracheal system. There are four limitations I'd like you to know about. Incompatibility with water, limited to a small size, tidal ventilation, and dead space. The first, third, and fourth ones listed here, you've already encountered um, when we talked about the humans. So there's only the second one that's new to you. Let's start off with incompatibility with water. So the tracheal system can't be used to breathe underwater. The tracheal system is incompatible with water for two reasons. The first is that water is too dense or viscous to be ventilated by passive diffusion in and out of the spiracles, and water is too dense to be ventilated by a rhythmic body of movements. Without ventilation, gas exchange would stop because the concentration gradient of oxygen and carbon dioxide would not be maintained across the tracheals. In water, there would be nothing driving diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The second reason for incompatibility with water is that the tracheals wouldn't be able to exchange gases efficiently enough with water to meet the oxygen demands of respiration and sustain the cricket's life. This is because the surface area to volume ratio of tracheals isn't large enough to absorb enough oxygen from the 1% of oxygen available in water. The surface area to volume ratio of the tracheal system isn't compatible with the extremely low um, oxygen available in water. The tracheal system can only efficiently carry out gas exchange with air, which has 21% oxygen availability. The second limitation is that the tracheal system is only efficient if the organism is small. This means that the cricket's tracheal system limits the size these insects can grow to, because if they grow any larger, the tracheal system wouldn't be able to efficiently get enough oxygen from air to meet their metabolic demands. This is for two reasons. The first reason is that crickets don't have a closed circulatory system to pump oxygenated blood around the body. They rely on diffusion alone to move inhaled air through the networks of trachea and tracheals to reach all the tissues and cells of the body. Because of this reliance on diffusion, insects are limited by the size to which they can grow. If insects were to grow any larger, then the diffusion distance from the spiracle to the body cells would be far greater, reducing the rate of diffusion. And so as a result, body cells may not get the oxygen they need to meet the metabolic demands fast enough. The second reason is that chitin rings that surround the trachea are relatively heavy, especially when you consider the fact that a large proportion of the insect's mass is taken up by the trachea network. If the cricket increases in size, the number and length of trachea containing this chitin would increase significantly and the cricket won't be able to move or fly due to the weight and the physical restrictions of the chitin. Now let's look at the limitations created by tidal ventilation and residual volume. So remember from video 4 that tidal ventilation describes how air enters and exits through the same way. In the cricket's case, air enters through the spiracles, then the trachea, then through the tracheals, and they exit through the same way, from the tracheals, through the trachea, and out through the spiracles. Tidal ventilation is a limitation of the tracheal system because the new oxygen-rich air ventilated into the system mixes with old air trapped in the tracheal tracheals. This old air is called the residual volume because it's the volume of air that's always left behind. It's the residue in the trachea and the tracheals. Because this residual volume is left behind in the airways, it is oxygen poor and carbon dioxide rich. And this mixing of new and old residual air during tidal ventilation lowers the concentration of the air that reaches the tracheals, and therefore it reduces the concentration gradient across the tracheals. Now let's talk about dead space. 
Remember from video 4 that dead space refers to the air that enters the gas exchange system but remains in the trachea and the upper parts of the tracheals. So this is the trachea and this would be the upper parts of the tracheals. Air in these parts does not participate in gas exchange. Dead space is a limitation because not all of the air inhaled gets to participate in gas exchange. So specifically, this is a limitation of the surface area to volume ratio of the tracheal system. Not all volume of air inhaled will have enough surface area on the tips of the tracheals to participate in gas exchange. Well done, you've reached the end of the video. So by now you should be able to explain how specific adaptations of the tracheal system enable crickets to survive in their terrestrial niche. And you should be able to discuss the limitations of the cricket tracheal system. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.